pictures of yesterday's game as the team comes out for what they had hoped would be a big homecoming win. We were really excited about this game, and everybody keeps talking about Wofford, last year's homecoming game, and we certainly were good enough to win that game. Did not, because I think we got too carried away with all the other activities for homecoming week. This week, that didn't happen, though. Eddie O'Brien starts out, and he kicks three consecutive field goals to put us ahead uh, nine to nothing before they come back and kick one, but uh, Eddie was perfect. In fact, this is two weeks in a row that he's been perfect. First one was a 49-yard effort, which is certainly nothing to sneeze at. And that one from 31 yards made it 6 to nothing. That was all the scoring in the first period. Then Eddie comes back with a 30-yarder uh, to start the second quarter. It was 9 to nothing at that point. And then uh, Northwest <coughs> Missouri scored its only points of the game. Peter Ramak. I was still a little bit worried here. We're uh, now the score is 9 to 3, and they're still within striking distance. However, we come back, and uh, Darren throws a touchdown pass to Bernard Ford which makes it 17-3. By the way, Bernard was the uh, MVP for the game offensively for us. Here he catches his second touchdown pass of the day to make it 24-3. That was actually uh, just a replay of that first one, which made it 17-3 after the two-point conversion. And I think this is the conversion you'll see right here. This touchdown was set up by a very good interception, wasn't it? Yes, it was. We'll see that in a few minutes. Uh, that was, of course... Uh, Darren Slack throwing to uh, Arnell, Spencer. Arnell Spencer for the two-point play. And this is the, the uh, second touchdown pass by uh, Darren to Bernard Ford. What a pretty play. That one covered 87 yards. The drive, something like 95 yards in just a couple of plays. And it gives them another record, I believe, for the longest touchdown pass in UCF history. And that brings the score to 24-3. And then those two hook up again. This time it'll be a five-yard touchdown reception for Bernard in the corner of the end zone, which made it 31-3. to Bernard is so good at this fade, and Darren's throwing it so well. I really can't see uh, how anybody can cover that consistently. 31-3 to was the score at halftime. UCF very much in control of the game. And in the third period, uh, the Knights picked up where they left off. Another pretty pass play, and uh, you know who's on the receiving end, Mr. Bernard Ford. So the score now is 31-3. Uh, 38-3. to 38-3. And, and we finish off the scoring with uh, Donnie Grayson. Right. Donnie caught another dump pass when they thought we were going to run, and uh, that finish it makes it 45-3. to What is this, Gene? What are we looking at there? Is that... Uh, do my eyes deceive me, or is that the wave? That looks to me like the first wave that I've seen in our stadium. <laughs> the Orlando Citrus Bowl with the UCF game going on, and the, the fans had a good time with that. Okay, when you <coughs> lose a game 45-3, to the uh, team on the losing end obviously is going to punt quite a bit, and you had Sean Becton back there doing a great job yesterday. Sean replaced uh, Keith Evans three weeks ago when Keith had the sprained ankle, and uh, we were a little worried the first couple of games, but this... Uh, this week, he really began to come into his own, I think. He had eight returns for 158 yards. As you know, we're primarily a punt blocking team. We blocked 20 our first two years here, and we blocked four so far this year. Uh, we're not going to see it on film today, but uh, in addition to these fine returns on the punt defense, uh, Bill Long also blocked a punt. So uh, we had a great day uh, in this area of the game. Now, a lot of people don't realize this, but special teams are so unbelievably important. Extremely. To you figure that that's a half the snaps in the game are going to be on the special team, or a third of the snaps are, so you need to win that third of the game. By the way, Sean Beckton was the special teams MVP for the game, which uh, shouldn't come as a big surprise to anybody. And some of his returns really, you know, set up uh, some, some fine scoring drives for you folks. It kept us in great field position nearly in the entire game. All right. Mike Code has certainly been one of the mainstays on your defense this year? Mike is a great leader for us, uh, one of our team captains, and uh, has had a very good game nearly every week. He's 56 there, and uh, you'll be able to see a few of the fine plays that he made, and of course, he, he kind of tops it off with an interception later on in, the, in this series. Uh, very impressive. Uh, in fact, this is it right here. I think you can tell that he gets a little bit excited just about a, Just this. a scope, huh? All right, that's Mike Code, and uh, we don't want to forget Jimmy Goodwin. We talked about the uh, interception, and uh, Jimmy is the one who had <coughs> set up UCF's first touchdown of the day yesterday. Just a fantastic job, and of course, he's, he's doing a great job replacing one of your other players who was injured earlier this year. That's right. Now, he's number 92 here, and you'll see him make a, a few real good hits here. And probably the thrill of the day for him was this interception that he had, and he nearly ran it back for a touchdown. 
He did a great job on it. Kurt Wiley, by the way, was the defensive player of the game. Uh, he had 10 tackles and a couple of assists and quarterback pressure. We don't have any footage on him, but uh, we'll do that next week for him. All right, you folks who weren't at the game yesterday can pretty much see what